Okay, um, this video is going to be a little bit different from the usual videos I make. Um, it's about demographics, which is something that I've long had an interest in, um, specifically urban demographics. Um, so what I'm talking about here basically is the population size of cities. It's a subject that I find very interesting and I, I always have done and I always have found it interesting. Um, I've conducted a few studies of my own and I've used several criteria for coming to, to the conclusions that I've come to. Um, I've done this for world cities and I might make a video about that later on. Um, but I've also done specific studies for the United Kingdom, which is, of course, my country, which I'm familiar with. Um, so regarding the studies, uh, I've done many, many studies, but I've done several big comprehensive studies, 2011 um, and most recently earlier this year. Um, so what I want to talk about in this video is a study that I done this year on UK cities. Now, there's a few disclaimers that I can make. Firstly, the figures that I'm going to read out are not exact figures. They're rounded to the nearest 10,000, uh, generally speaking, and they're not intended to be an exact representation. So the true figure is going to be a bit more or a bit this. Um, secondly, the figures that I'm quoting will not be the figures that you see in Wikipedia or other official sources. And the reason for this is because the criteria I'm taking on board um, produces a figure that is somewhere between the city proper and the metropolitan area. And this is something that is very important to understand because um, a lot of people who have a casual sort of understanding of this immediately think that the population is, of a city is the same as its metropolitan area. And actually people are quite badly misinformed on the subject. I've seen a lot of videos on, for example, the UK's top 20 cities and so on. And I've seen some people just throwing out random figures at, and I can tell that they don't really know what they're talking about. Um, and without wanting to sound arrogant, I, I have actually spent considerable time studying this subject. Um, so I'm going to tell you how I produce this criteria. And I'm going to cite the population figures for the top 10 cities with a brief explanation as to how I reach those um, figures, and then maybe read out some of the other results. Um, altogether, I took the population estimates for 228 settlements. Those 228 settlements are all the settlements in the UK with a population of 40,000 or more. Um, so 228 towns and cities in this country have a population of approximately 40,000 or more. Um, so what's my criteria? Well, uh, I use a number of resources. Firstly, maps. This is an important resource. Uh, the A to Z maps, these ones are a little bit old, but the general streets won't have changed that much. There uh, hasn't been that many streets built onto cities. And these ordinary survey maps switch to a wider area. Now, the reason I use maps is because it gives a clear representation of where a city's urban sprawl roughly ends. Um, the one I showed there was Manchester. Manchester is a good example of a large built up metropolitan area. And it's it's a good example of a place that is often misquoted because when people perceive that Manchester is a really big city, almost universally they're taken into account the whole metropolitan area. If you look at the official statistics, Manchester is actually quite far down this. I think it's about number eight officially. Now, for my study, what I've done is taken figures that are somewhere between the official figure, that is the the local council's uh, figure, the local government's figure for the area that is considered administered by a city council. So, for example, the Manchester city of Manchester includes a certain number of wards and areas that are designated within a certain area in Greater Manchester. And beyond that area is no longer the city of Manchester. It comes under different councils like Salford, like Trafford, and so on. So for my study, what I have primarily taken into account is a contiguous area. What I mean by this is if you have uh, a city and another town or city very close by, especially other towns, 
and there's no way to differentiate where one begins and another ends, then in those circumstances, I have included the smaller town as simply being part of a contiguous sprawl of that city. But where I have drawn a line is larger towns that are still quite distinct. Uh, and I'll explain each one as I go through to do this. Um, I've also taken into account population trends. So, for example, comparing the official census from 2001 to 2011, um, and working out what's a rough um, approximate growth rate per year. Um, in the UK, although we do have a rising population, it's not as fast growing as some cities in developing countries. So, for example, uh, the average British city is not growing as fast as the average Nigerian city and so on. So it's not a very difficult task, but it's not consistent. Some cities are growing slightly faster than others. One thing I've noticed is some southern uh, town cities are growing quite a fast pace. Oxford, for example, it's still relatively small, but it's growing at a fast pace. Peterborough, Swindon are also growing fast. Uh, some big cities, their official population has actually declined. And to my American viewers, uh, imagine Detroit. Well, here it's a similar story with Glasgow. The city is considerably smaller than it was in the past, although the contiguous area is still big, just like the city of Detroit is relatively small. I think it only ranks about 30th among American cities, but the metropolitan area is still within the top 10. So there's two things that people tend to think about the city proper and the metropolitan area. So my figure is somewhere in the middle. I take into account areas that are immediately contiguous. That is their streets, their built up area runs immediately into the core city. But I haven't included outlying towns that are still quite distinct. Um, I've also taken on board population trends. If it seems that it is rising, I work out roughly what the population growth is per year. And the last census was 2011. This is 2015, so I add four years to that. Uh, and then in the case of big cities, I, in some cases, I've also added an extra 10,000. The reason being is that uh, just for uh, any mistakes that might be made and for unregistered people who may be unregistered in the official population, that, for example, may include students who are from another city, but they are in that city for a good proportion of the year or maybe unregistered migrants. So there's a lot of people who may, for one reason or another, not be registered in the official population. Um, this is especially the case with Chinese cities, although um, I'm going to focus here specifically on British cities. So just to be clear, the figures that I'm going to read out, uh, people will say, oh, but I looked that on Google, that wasn't the figure I found. Again, the criteria that I'm taking on board here is including contiguous towns and population growth trends and people who may not be registered and i've tried to make this as approximate as possible of course it's not going to be an accurate figure the true figure is not going to be the figures that i'm reading out but based on my criteria i believe it will be somewhere along that range so without further ado here is the list and like i say with each one i'm going to give a brief explanation so again once again just to clarify the this that I'm going to read out the order will not be the official order that you will see, but I'm going to explain each city in the top 10, then maybe read out the next 20 after that. So number one, London. This is ironically in some ways the easiest. I say ironically because it's, uh, it's a big city, so you would expect it to be more complex to judge. But actually London is relatively easy. Um, there's a few reasons for this. Number one, putting it in the first spot is very easy. Because unlike other countries, um, the gulf between our first city and the second city is very broad. In other countries, um, for example, in China, in Germany, in a lot of other countries, the official population for the first city and the second city is very similar. So it's difficult to really see a differentiation with that. Um, in the case of the United Kingdom, everyone agrees London is by far the biggest city. There's no real dispute about that. It should be said, the actual city of London, technically speaking, is a very small area and it's only got 7,000 people. That's traditional old medieval city of London. But in the popular consciousness and for almost every purpose, whether it be uh, representing itself on a global scale, for business, for virtually every reason, 
when we talk about London, we're talking about Greater London, the Greater London Metropolitan County. Now, I say it's relatively easy because London, um, there is a lot of big towns around it, but there's still a commuter belt that includes quite a lot of rural areas. So the London commuter belt, which includes places like Hemel Hempstead, St Albans, Reading, um, and so on, they can be considered part of the Greater London region. But Greater London itself um, is virtually basically London, the one exception being the town of um, of please excuse me a second uh, what oh that's Watford Watford uh, Watford is the only big town within the M25 motorway that is part of Greater London but isn't part of the contiguous sprawl of London um, it's the only big town that is within the M25 that isn't London itself and if you look at a map of the outline of Greater London it is almost exactly the same as the M25 motorway, with a few exceptions. So basically, I haven't changed much from the official figure. Um, I think I've added 100,000 based on some towns like Loughton and Essex and a few other places that run into that sprawl. But basically, the figure I have, 8,540,000. Um, 8,540,000. So again, this is the official figure with growth rates and 2011 the official figure was 8,174,000. I've worked out that there's a growth trend of approximately 120,000 per year. You just add that together. Uh, I round up to a figure of 8,540,000 straightforward. Second C. Now in the UK this is always a matter of debate. Is it Birmingham? Is it Manchester? Is it Glasgow? Um, most people would say Birmingham and I go with that. Reason being that not only is the official city of Birmingham twice as big as any other city, with the exception of Leeds, which is a different matter, but the metropolitan area of Birmingham is also big and the contiguous sprawl of Birmingham is big. Now, if I say there's three ways to look at this, there's a city proper, there's a contiguous sprawl and there's a metropolitan area. And most figures you'll see will either be the city proper or the metropolitan area. What I'm looking at is a contiguous sprawl. So for the contiguous sprawl of Birmingham, I've included Solihull, which is about 100,000, plus Smethwick, plus um, Sutton Coldfield. They're not technically part of the city of Birmingham, but I have included them in the contiguous sprawl. And the figure I reach is 1,330,000. 1,330,000. Birmingham, second city. Number three, and this is in some ways the hardest one I had come to reach. Officially, Leeds is the third city in terms of population, and that is by quite a distance. It's approximately 780,000. Now, in this study, I was in two minds whether to make Manchester the third city by including the contiguous area of Manchester. Because Leeds, it has to be said, is a unique situation. Leeds is the only major city in Britain whereby the official population includes a good part of the surrounding area. In pretty much every other case, the official population is a smaller than the built up area. But in the case of Leeds, it actually includes surrounding towns. So for example, places like Weatherby, Rothwell, Morley, Yeadon, Otley, um, Rawdon, Gisley. These are sizable, medium sized towns around the city of Leeds. Um, when you add them together, uh, Leeds just has a straightforward figure and almost everywhere you look, it's consistent. And that figure is about 780,000. Um, so what I tried to do, because I was reluctant to include these surrounding towns in a proper representation of what is the contiguous city of Leeds. But I found it very difficult to take away their populations from the total and then reach a conclusion. Um, I've decided, therefore, to keep that official figure for Leeds and not change it much in my study. The reason being is that Leeds is a very important city. It's the main business centre pretty much outside London. Well, the main financial centre outside London. It's a very built up city. If you go into Leeds, it looks like a big place. It's very built up. It's got a lot of impressive buildings. So with all this on board, I've decided to just stick with that figure. 
technically it's breaking away from the general rule that I'm making of just including the contiguous area because the city of Leeds includes considerable rural areas. I mean, the town of Weatherby looks like a countryside town. It doesn't look like it's part of a big city. But I've broken my rule for the sole, um, sole exception. And I've given Leeds 785,000. So number three, Leeds, 785,000. Number four, number four I gave to Glasgow. And the figure I got for Glasgow was 778,000. Now, Glasgow is by far the biggest city in Scotland, even though it has significantly declined. I think the official population of Glasgow is about 600,000. For my study, what I have included, just looking at my notes here, is that figure of the city of Glasgow, plus the towns of Rougher Glen, Bearsden, Bishop Briggs, Clarkston, Giffnock, Clydebank, Duntucker, Cambuslan. They're all contiguous with the built-up area of Glasgow. I haven't included East Kilbride because if you look at a map, there's still a bit of rural space between the Glasgow built-up area and East Kilbride. Likewise, I haven't included Motherwell. Now, how I perceive a built-up area and how I perceive a rural urban gap is, of course, open to debate. There would be other people who would look at a map and say, wait a second, Motherwell's directly running into Glasgow. Another thing that I've taken on board is if a place has quite a distinct character of its own. So Motherwell as a town is still quite distinct from Glasgow. That's why I haven't included it. So Glasgow, number four, 778,000. Number five, and this was a switch around from my last study. Number five, after much consideration, I've given to Liverpool, not Manchester, Liverpool. Um, even though the city is officially smaller than Manchester um, and is not so big, the official city is only 470,000. I've included some pretty sizable towns around Liverpool, which again runs straight into it. I've included Bootle, I've included Heighton with Robbie, and I've included Crosby. Um, and again, with Liverpool, there is a, a motorway that encircles that. I think it is the... Bear with me a second. Yes, it is the M... Just check it. Sorry, the A5300. A5300, that road basically, anything within that on the Merseyside, that part of Merseyside, I basically call Liverpool. And the figure I reach with Liverpool, um, taking this into account, is 734,000. Now, coming up to number six, then we have Manchester. Now, again, this was not an easy choice. I could easily have put Manchester before Liverpool, and it will be a controversial reckoning. I have given Manchester 713,000. I know that sounds quite precise, but this is based on populations added together. And that's basically the city of Manchester, which is 520,000, plus the towns of Presswich, Droylston, Stretford, Ermston, Brighton. I couldn't find a population for, figure for Brighton, so I guess that 20,000 based on the sort of area it covered. Dalesworth and Curzel. That led me to 713,000. Now, I should emphasize, if I included Salford, the whole city of Salford, um, then I would have reached a population of well over 900,000 from Manchester. Um, because Salford itself is about 200,000. Um, so if, had I taken that sort of understanding, Manchester would easily have been third, above Leeds, above Glasgow, and above Liverpool. But I chose not to because Salford is a city in its own right. It's not just a town, it's a city. And it has quite a distinctive character. So although it runs straight into Manchester, and Manchester runs straight into Salford. In fact, I remember I was staying in a hostel and I didn't know which city I was in. I was in a Manchester postcode, but the street fell under Salford. So that was interesting, close to the Manchester Museum of Industry and Science in the city centre. So. Um, Manchester, number six, 713,000. Um, coming up to number seven. Number seven I've given to Bristol. And this is one of the biggest gulfs between the figure that I have given and the official city. The city of Bristol is about 530,000. But for my study, I've made Bristol considerably bigger. And I've included towns like Kings Winford, um, Hannon, just looking at my notes here, and several other 
sizable towns that are completely contiguous with Bristol. I should say that population figures aren't available for all of these places. So in some cases, I, I have had to guess based on the sort of area uh, town covers. And in many cases, these really could be described as commuter towns that are directly contiguous with the built up sprawl of a city. So number seven, Bristol. And I've given Bristol 621,000. Number eight, Sheffield. Sheffield's quite easy because Sheffield, uh, more so than the other cities, um, is not particularly built up. Uh, yes, there's Rotherham and yes, there's some other large towns in the South Yorkshire County, but Sheffield itself is quite clearly defined as a city. So the official population figure, 550,000, I've only added to that slightly by including some villages that are sort of contiguous and adding an extra 10,000, which was my rule for cities. So for Sheffield, I've given 584,000. Number eight, Sheffield, 584,000. Number nine. Now, this is a switch around from my 2001, so my 2011 study. In 2011, I made Edinburgh number nine. But on this occasion, I switched it around and given the number nine place to Nottingham. Nottingham in the East Midlands. And the reason I put Nottingham at number nine is because it is considerably more built up in its urban area than Edinburgh is. And the towns that I've included in Nottingham, just to be clear, the city of Nottingham is about 320,000 roughly. Um, I have included Carlton, Gedling, Arnold, Beeston, Chilwell and Totten. Um, some of those towns are quite sizable. Arnold and Beeston, for example, are both around the 40, 50,000 mark. So when I add all of these together, the population figure I reach for Nottingham is 527,000, which on this understanding is only a little bit smaller than Sheffield. Number 10, Edinburgh. Edinburgh is quite easy because there is no major, major towns around Edinburgh that run into its contiguous sprawl. Um, so the figure I've given for Edinburgh is only slightly bigger than the official figure. And the figure I have given is 508,000. So that's the top 10 cities of the United Kingdom. Just to run down again very quickly. London, 8,740,000. Birmingham, 1,330,000. Leeds, 785,000. Glasgow, 778,000. Liverpool, 734,000. Manchester, 713,000. Bristol, 621,000. Sheffield, 584,000. Nottingham, 527,000, and Edinburgh, 508,000. Now, I'm going to read out the following cities, maybe give a brief explanation, but not as lengthy as the other ones, because I've already spoken for over 20 minutes here. Um, number 11, I've given to Leicester, um, and that's a significant growth increase from my last study, because I've included a lot of commuter towns, 493,000. Number 12, Newcastle upon Tyne. Again, this one was quite tough because I had to judge where was it going to include, where was it not going to include. And for this one, I've included a good bit of Tyneside that is outside the official Newcastle upon Tyne city. Uh, I've given Newcastle upon Tyne 432,000. That's number 12. Number 13, Bradford, 422,000. Slightly smaller than the overall city, which again, like Leeds, includes rural areas. Cardiff, 362,000. Belfast, 359,000. Coventry, 343,000. Up to number 17, Southampton, 312,000. I've included a lot of surrounding settlements there. Hull, 301,000. Brighton and Hove, 283,000. Again, I've included um, a very fast growth rate. Stoke on Trent, number 20, 276,000. Plymouth, number 21, 262,000. Number 22, uh, I've called the South Medway Towns. Uh, I've used this as a sort of triple city agglomeration. That is Gillingham, um, and I believe, I don't have a map handy right now, but I've included Gillingham, uh, Tunbridge, and there's another big town there. And they're all, it's very difficult to differentiate them. I think it was Chatham was the other one. So together, the South Medway Towns, 262,000. Derby, 256,000. Wolverhampton, 254,000. Reading, 
248,000. Milton Keynes, 248,000. So they're about the same. Portsmouth, 215,000. Northampton, 214,000. Luton, 212,000. Aberdeen, 210,000. Dudley, 205,000. Number 32. Bournemouth, 198,000. 33. Norwich, 195,000. 34. Peterborough, 194,000. 35. Warrington, 193,000. 36. Swindon, 186,000. 37. Salford, 184,000. 38. Stockport, 182,000. 39. Swansea, 181,000. And 40. York, 180,000. Um, so I'm going to close up with this very soon because I have been talking for a while. But once again, these figures are not official figures. They're figures based on my criteria, which is population growth trends, the contiguous area, and um, yeah, those two main factors, population growth trends and taking into account the contiguous area. If you have any questions about why I've reached a conclusion for any of those, feel free to ask. Um, I'm not going to read out the rest because I've got 200 and 220 or something like that. Uh, interesting, my own city, Sunderland, um, has got significantly smaller. My own city is now at number 43 in the United Kingdom. Sunderland, 173,000. That's significantly smaller than before. Last time it was number 31. Uh, we've lost about 10,000 people. Um, in 2011, or around about that time, we had a population of about 180,000. Now it's 173,000. So Sunderland is declining. Um, but if you look at official figures, you'll see a figure of about 280, 290,000. Sunderland, like Leeds, includes surrounding towns. So we include Washington, Houghton in the Spring, and Hetton the Hall. But I haven't included them in the city of Sunderland proper because they are still distinct towns. So there you go. That's Britain's top 40 settlements. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you want to scrutinise my criteria, that's fine. Uh, but do it respectfully, you know, um, no need to, to throw insults or anything like that. Um, and, you know, I've spent a very significant time studying this, so those are the conclusions I reach. If you have any questions about this, feel free to ask. Uh, and thank you for watching.